Have you ever wanted to be notified when one of your automations runs, but you've just been disappointed in the notifications in the HomeKit ecosystem? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Convert to Shortcuts feature to really kind of supercharge your house. Let's check it out. Hey guys, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, the channel where we bring you smart home content focusing on Apple HomeKit. If you want to follow us along with the journey, do me a favor, subscribe below. Today we are going to dig into one of the things that bugs a lot of people, and that is the lack of notifications uh, within Apple HomeKit. There are things like, when something happens, I want to be notified. Now there are limited notifications for things like, say, um, if I have a motion trigger, but maybe we want to, want to just send a notification on just about anything. We're gonna dig into that today. As with all things that I'm looking at lately, I like to really drive from a specific use case. What am I trying to accomplish? In my living room shown here, I have a big old Honeywell humidifier. This is a, I think a five liter or something crazy like that. It will run for 24 hours straight, but uh, it does get empty. And because it is not a smart humidifier, I'm not getting any notifications on it. So what I want to happen here is, I don't wanna to have to just kind of walk over and go, wow, is it ever dry in here? I would like to be able to um, be notified when the humidity starts to drop below a certain point, and then that way I can quickly go, hey, go fill up the humidifier. So that's my goal here. So looking at the Apple HomeKit uh, Home app, and this is on the Mac OS for those of you who haven't seen it, what we've got here is I've got my dining room. I'm showing you that, and we're gonna look at what we have to work with. Again, it's always, what do we have to work with? What are we trying to make happen? That recipe still follows through. So if I go up into my sensors here at the top, I'm gonna go and look, and I've got a humidity sensor in here, which is the iHome uh, ISS50, right? So this has been around for a long time. It works really well. It's got a whole bunch of other sensors in it as well, which is nice. Uh, and this is just perfect for what I want to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a automation based on this. So in the automation tab, really simple, we're gonna hit the plus button up here on the right. I am going to say when a sensor detects something, that's what I wanna use for my trigger. So we're gonna to go to the dining room here, and as you can see here, the humidity sensor is not available. So luckily, we can move over to something like the controller app. So this is actually a great example in that not all the things that you want to trigger on are always available within the Apple HomeKit, uh, the native home app. So going over to controller, which is another native Mac OS app. So going into the automations here, we're going to say add automation. We're going to give it a, a name. So notify on humidity. One of the other things I like to do myself is I will put LR at the beginning of the automation name. And really naming convention is so important. So we're going to make sure we have a good naming convention. LR means this is going to apply to the living room. Notify in humidity. That's what I want it to do. We're gonna call this an event based and now we're just gonna click next and we're gonna go find the start event. Click on start event, it's going to be an accessory and compared to what we saw over in the HomeKit app, you can see there is a lot more here. If I go into the dining room, it's gonna be a filter on all the things available in my dining room. One of them is the humidity sensor, that's what we wanted. When we click on that, we're gonna get everything available within this humidity sensor, right? So this is a uh, five-in-one sensor, so there's a lot more here. There's motion, there's light, there's temperature, there's humidity, uh, and even below, which is kind of a unique one, we can even do sound detected if we so chose. In this case, again, we had a plan, let's stick to the plan, let's execute that. Current relative humidity, we're gonna grab that value, and I'm going to say any value. The reason that I'm gonna do that is um, because using any value, it just means if it changes ever, then we're gonna add another conditional here in the trigger check to see uh, exactly what the range is. So if it's any value, if it changes, and the accessory, and we're gonna go back in, pick the same accessory, humidity, and the current relative humidity is less than or equal to 35%. That's going to be my value. So basically what I'm saying here is if it starts to be dry within my dining room, if it registers less 35% or less, then I'm going to execute whatever the scene is. So really at this point, we're just going to choose a scene. Uh, I just selected arc heater off. It really doesn't matter at this point. The reason we're doing this is that the controller app will error out if we don't add an action. So this is just something to be aware of. Really, it doesn't matter at all. We're going to replace that in the home app in a second. Click the close button. Now we can check. We can say the name of the automation, uh, living room, notify on humidity. It is going to check if there is any change at all. 
If there is a change, check to see if it's less than or equal to 35%. And if it does execute that scene, um, we're not even going to worry about turning it on or off. At this point, we click save. So now that we've added it, let's go take a look at it and make sure everything looks proper. Uh, the This is an alphabetical list. You can see here I've got a degree temp for living room. Uh, LR, notify on humidity. Uh, so there is a mistake that I have made here, so I'm going to edit this. This is not actually the living room, as we said earlier. This is the dining room, and this is why we double-check our work, right? So I've changed the name quickly here to DR, notify on humidity, in that this is going in the dining room, not in the living room, right? So this is why we double-check our work, no problem. I'm going to click Done. Now that we've got this set up, this is kind of the beauty of HomeKit, is in the background, regardless of which app we're in, this is all syncing to the HomeKit database. We're all working from the same central um, repository of information. All we're doing is kind of changing the cosmetic way that we access it. So now that we're back over in the Apple HomeKit Home, this is the native home app. So the reason that we have to do this is because Apple has not exposed the convert to shortcut feature within any of the third-party apps yet. So there's some things they've kept for themselves. A little frustrating, a little back and forth, but I think you'll see by the end that this is actually worth it. So we're going to go down and find that new automation that created when dining room humidity sensor changes. And as I said, right now these scenes will be set, but I actually don't want that scene to be set. I want to have a convert to shortcut feature. So we're going to go and click on select accessories and scenes. I'm going to deselect the arc heater. And I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. This is exactly how you would do this on the iPad, which is a very similar setup to uh, the Mac OS app. Um, and again, you could do this on your iPhone as well. Personally, I like doing it on the on my Mac right now because I can cut and paste between different windows, which you'll see why that's useful in just a couple of seconds. So we will convert the shortcut. I am going to delete the arc heater off and I'm going to add an action here. So what I'm going to do is add the action of a URL. And the URL that I'm going to be asking for is going to be over in if this then that. So let's go over there now for a second. So for those of you not familiar with if this then that, this is kind of a um, a way to be able to tie your triggers together. Uh, this used to be free. You can still get a free account. I think you can do maybe three actions on it. Um, they are have moved to a subscription model if you want more advanced actions. And I did get into the uh, initial subscription model. Again, from a HomeKit standpoint, one of the things that, that I'm trying to do is keep everything within HomeKit as much as possible this year. I'm trying to get out of other ecosystems. Uh, unfortunately, there's some things I just can't do. So this is a really good way to keep all the actions in my house, all the actions local control, but I need this to be able to do the notification. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to create what is called a webhook. So a webhook is uh, something as essentially I'm going to create a URL, a web address that when it receives a trigger, when it's when someone goes and tries to get that web address, it's going to say, hey, someone tried to grab this, go do something. So receive a web, web request. That's what I'm going to do. The event name, I'm going to call it um, dining room humidifier uh, low. And I am going to copy that. Now we're going to create the trigger. Cool. Now we get a then that. Okay, so we're going to go here, we're going to go say notifications, and I am going to do a simple notification uh, for the purposes of this demo. Again, you could do rich notifications here where you could even do um, things like you can link, you can put image URLs in there so you can get really kind of a rich notification, send pictures, all that kind of cool stuff if you wanted to. I'm not doing that today. I'm going to do a simple notification. I just want to tell me, I want it to tell me to go and fill the humidifier. So I'm going to say... Uh, the dining room is dry. Please go fill the humidifier. That's it. Pretty simple, right? Create action. There we go. I'm going to say continue. And I'm going to say finish. So if the maker event dr humidifier low is triggered, then send the notification using the app. So how do I actually do this now? So one of the tricky things is actually finding the service URL. So if you go, and I'll put this on the screen right now, to ifthisthenthat.com slash maker 
underscore webhooks, you will then be able to go and get your own page here by clicking on the documentation. So I'm going to uh, blur a lot of this out because this is my own personal key that I'm not giving you guys for, for reasons. And if you go to the documentation, you will see at the top here, your key is this. And to trigger an event, you can make a post or a get web request to whatever this is with the variable of the event name, right? We can get a lot more complicated than this. I'm not gonna bother with that today. Uh, essentially, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab that name and I'm gonna go into another window. So now I'm gonna build my URL. So I know what I called the trigger. That's the event here, that's the variable. So I'm gonna say dr humidifier low, that was the name of the trigger. And let me go back into the URL here without my key, delete all of that, and then just put that in just like that. So this becomes the key. If anybody goes to this web page, if this then that is going to say, okay, go and send that notification through the if this then that app. So you will have to have that app uh, loaded on your phone as well. But you know, hey, it is what it is, right? If you want these notifications, sometimes you have to do, do these things. So I'm gonna add back in, uh, without you guys seeing this, I'm gonna add back in the key. The, kind of the text manipulation here, this is why I'm doing this on a Mac. So I'm gonna go back into home now and I'm gonna say that URL is going to be the entire um, URL of this particular trigger, the webhook. So now that we've got the URL in there, I'm gonna do a secondary action here and I'm just gonna type in URL and I'm gonna get the contents of this URL. Now, frankly, I don't even care about the contents for this particular action. All I need to do is do a get against that page. I'm not gonna do anything with it. I just need to trigger it. I need, um, if this then that needs to receive the request for it to know, hey, I wanna do something. So now that we've got this built out like this, uh, let's do a quick test. So you can see here, congratulations, you fired the DR humidif humidifier low. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but right on the phone there, the dining room is dry, please go fill the humidifier, just like that. So es essentially now what we've done is we've taken a HomeKit trigger and we have given you uh, simple notifications. As you saw, you can do rich notifications. There's a lot of playing around you can do with this. Uh, pretty amazing what you can do with convert to shortcuts. So now that we've got this, congratulations, you fired the DR trigger in here. We've proved that this shortcut is working properly. It's going out, it's using that URL, it is getting the contents of the URL, which again, we don't care about, throw it away. Uh, we're gonna click the next button and finish off the shortcut. And again, just make sure that everything is running the way we think it should. So again, keeping things really simple, I had a task I wanted to accomplish, which I wanted to know when the humidifier was dry. How did I do that? I looked at what I had. I had a humidity sensor that would let me know when the humidity was low. And then I used that to trigger a convert to shortcut and an if this then that webhook to be able to send me a notification to my phone. Again, once you get into if this then that, there are so many possibilities here, but I'm really trying to keep things simple as far as making sure that most of my automations are really in HomeKit. Hopefully you guys appreciated this. So one thing I do want to address with you guys is uh, to just ask for your patience and your feedback around audio quality. It is something that I have been struggling with for a little while, and I'm trying to do my best, trying to, to, to do some different experiments to improve that, because I know that's important to you. And with that, we're at the end of the video, and right about here or here is a video that YouTube thinks that you might be interested in watching next. See you guys soon.